Welcome back to my lab, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to my lab. Welcome to dinners from around the world with me, Chef Walker Barrett. Welcome back to my kitchen. If you are new to our live, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. I want to take time out to welcome those of you who are watching on Facebook and also on Instagram. And welcome to our Next in Food family on YouTube. Welcome, guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm a little tired today, but bear with me. I still want to show you what I'll be making for dinner. I try to keep it very simple based on what is in my fridge. So, I have a story. Went to the market, bought a couple of breadfruits for street food Saturdays, and I came home with the breadfruit, and the next morning, every single breadfruit was ripe. Of course. What do I do with all of that money and all of that breadfruit? I have to find a way to use them up even though they're ripe so i put them in my fridge and um, i've had i have quite a bit of recipes on already on my youtube channel using breadfruit but today i'm going to show you another one and this one we're coming into the holiday season so i'm going to show you how to use the breadfruit uh, to make a cookie and so there are many types of cookies there are five types of cookies you can have a drop cookie, an icebox cookie, a bar cookie, a cutout cookie, a roll cookie, and it goes on and on and on. I'm sure that was five. Today, we are going to be doing a more like a bar type cookie, and we're going to also be doing a drop cookie. But what is special about this cookie is that we are using the beloved breadfruit. Yeah, this is how dinosaur it looks. This variety of breadfruit is what they the lady called in the market, she says the maca breadfruit because the outside of it kind of look like, like it have um, spikes, kind of look like a jackfruit on the outside in terms of the spikes. So that's another tutorial, the many variety of breadfruits that we have. I'm not sure if this one is yellow or white hot. I have not yet cut into it. So guys, join me as I figure out what kind of breadfruit this is in terms of yellow or white heart so as i said this is quite ripe and so you can just pick and this is the stem of the breadfruit see it comes right out this is what we jamaican refer to as the heart and soul of the breadfruit this is what it looks like so this is actually the stem and because it's ripe it is you know it, it is removable quite easily so a breadfruit is filled with nice complex carbohydrate and just like a banana, it goes from green to ripe. When it is green, it is more starchy and savory. And then of course, when it is ripe, we do not normally eat it a lot when it is ripe. Well, at least for, for me growing up, when it is ripe, my mother usually uses it to make a breadfruit punch or throw it into a pudding or make fritters with it. Um, but you can do so many things. Whatever you can do with bananas, you can do with breadfruit. So, Let's cut into it. Sure. Carrie, Carrie, I'm going to say hello, my teachers. Hey, Carrie. Seema says hot legs. Mary Marie says good evening. Lisa Pink says hello. Hello, guys. So, let us cut into the humble breadfruit and reveal the beautiful inside. So, I have this in the fridge. So, as I said, just like ripe bananas, it's when it's ripe, it's sweet. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Williams, this is what it looks Sunday. like if you are looking from YouTube. Happy Sunday, guys. Happy Sunday to all of you. This is what it looks like, guys, on Facebook. So these are the little seeds. And because it's ripe, you can always just scoop them out with a spoon. Andre Darren says that breadfruit looks rotten. <laughs> no, Andre, it's not rotten. Do not speak of what you don't know. Shaquille says good evening. Good evening, Shaquille. 
This is a ripe breadfruit, Andre. Ripe does not mean rotten. It's just that, as I said in my intro, most Jamaicans, and I'm speaking based on where I come from, once the breadfruit is ripened, it falls off the tree or they throw it away. But it is a fruit, so why not eat it while it is still ripe? So we're just going to need half of our breadfruit tonight. Because... The Pink Shack says hi from Bahamas. Hi, Pink Shack. So guys, I'm just using one cup of this breadfruit. You see how easy you scoop it out when it is ripe? It's like butter. As a matter of fact, you can use the breadfruit to make a lovely, 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 lovely spread. A lovely breadfruit butter. M. Campbell says hi, good evening, chef and family. Hi, I am Campbell. Maestro says hi, I'm new here, happy to join. Welcome, welcome. So guys, for this week, I'm going to be uploading quite a bit of breadfruit tutorial using up this bounty of the breadfruits that got right on me and show you how you can use it at home, just sharing. But tonight we are focusing on cookies. You know, it's a holiday and a holiday time in my house, we make cookies. And cookies are easy snacks for you to grab and go, break your tea, coffee, whatever. So we're gonna put this out the way. And let me show you guys into my food processor is where I'm going to be making this cookie all right I'm actually going to be making two types of cookies so stick around so we're starting with dessert as usual no rush so in the food processor if you don't have a food processor you can use a wooden spoon with a in a bowl so I'm not using any additional sugars tonight no simple sugars so if you want a healthier little dessert to snack on without feeling too guilty, you can try using this. So I'm using dates. You know, dates are very, very sweet. They're naturally sweet. And I'm using some prunes. So I'm using approximately two, four, six, eight dates and eight prunes. So all of these are good complex carbs. So we're going to put that in. And we're going to give this a chop first. Alright, so nice and this is what it looks like. So it looks like a paste right now. So that is our primary sugar. Now we are going to be adding our one cup of breadfruit and this is ripe breadfruit and by the way boil regular breadfruit can be used just boil it and mash it and use that if you'd like so this is what we're going to do perfect so now what happens it looks like when you cream butter and sugar see that See, this is what it looks like. So it's nice and smooth. Sometimes I make a, a breadfruit spread. This would be great on toast. You know, if you want to just go raw for a while and just eat food in its natural form, these are simple, tasty ways that you can do so. I'm going to add some spice. For my spice, I am adding some cinnamon powder and by some I mean half of a teaspoon of cinnamon powder goes in just like that and I use it just come back up okay welcome back YouTube Thank having you a little Wi-Fi issue welcome back Facebook we went off for a little bit, having a little slow fi Wi-Fi issue tonight. Are we back in IG? Yes, we're back. Welcome back on IG, guys. We had a little nope. slow fly. We're still frozen. Yes, 
go ahead while we continue with the guys that are on. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the base of our lemon. No, it's not lemon. What's it again? Almond breadfruit cookies. It's so good. Now, to this, I want to add a little bit of fat. Okay. Project Brian, that looks delicious. Blessing, Chef. Welcome back. Welcome. So, to this, guys, I'm adding one third of a cup butter if I want some fat in this. So, I melt butter and now I'm just adding it directly to the party. I wish you guys could taste this. That did the breadfruit. It's something different, but it's something absolutely delicious. So, in here, I have two cups of almond flour. So, if you are gluten intolerant, this is a great little cookie for you. It has no natural wheat flour for those who cannot digest the gluten that is found in wheat. So, this is almond flour, and almond flour is made by removing the outer skin of the almond and grounding it up into a meal. So we're adding our almond flour, two cups. Oh, and oats flour is another thing that you can use. So if you have rolled oats or quick oats, you could just chop it up and it will work just fine. This is coconut flour. And what this is, is dried coconut chopped up into almost like a powder. So these are all natural stuff and this is half of a cup and you of what you're making of coconut powder. Hi Sandra. I am making cookies. I am using ripe breadfruit as one of my ingredients for the cookie. And now finally I'm adding an egg. I like egg. I love egg. I want as much protein in this cookie as I possibly can get. So that is the reason for adding the egg. If you want to make this totally uh, vegan, you can just omit the egg, not a problem, and add a little bit more prune and some more nuts if you'd like. Now I also have some walnuts. Is this walnuts? Pecan. I don't know these ones. So I have some pecans that are going to be added. And I have chocolate, chocolate chips. So I'm adding all of that in. Also, I'm adding one little pinch of, where's my spoon? Half teaspoon of baking powder just to level the vibe a little bit. So that goes in. And I want to chop my nuts before I put them in. Where is my, where's my board? Where's that board that I just had? In the sink. In the sink? Oh, no. Yeah. Debo says I need to look for the December. It's up ranking, so it's going to have some. Debo says hi to you. Hi. Debo says good evening, chef. All right, so I'm good evening, guys. I'm gonna just chop these pecans. Now I'm using what I have. The way I cook, guys, I, I am inspired based on what I have at the moment or what I feel like eating. So those are how my recipes come about because for me, cooking is an act of love. And when I make food for my family or my customers, I'm just showing them how much I love and care about them. And so my inspiration for the dishes, it comes from many places. If I could go to the market and see something, for example, this cookie was inspired by the fact that these breadfruits just ripe on me. And then my brain started going into 10 different ways to use up these breadfruits in ways that I've never used before. And so this is how this one comes along. So on my YouTube channel, you'll see many breadfruit. We have breadfruit fritter, we have breadfruit pudding, we have breadfruit, actually, I'm going to buy a breadfruit thing. Last week, a friend of mine who works uh, at the Ministry of Agriculture, 
They were celebrating Jamaica, Eat Jamaica Day. And she is a lover of breadfruit. And so she called me and she said, Chef, make some breadfruit products for me now. So I made a couple of breadfruit stuff. She wanted a breadfruit punch. And so I made a, more like a, a meal in a jar, a breadfruit shake. That one was really, really, really good. And she wanted an fancy dessert. So I made her a breadfruit cream cheese tart. That tutorial is going to go up for you guys to see how that is also done. So in our food processor, let's recap. Denise Bradshaw, hi Simonso. Hi Denise, thank you for joining. So tonight we are making almond breadfruit cookie bar. And in here we have one cup of ripe breadfruit, one egg, eight dates, eight prunes. We have half of a cup of chopped pecans, two cups of almond flour, half cup of coconut flour, and one third of a cup of chocolate chip, and a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg. So here goes. Box. 
oops, here though. All right, so we have three down and three more to go. Three down. I know you guys are dying to see what these deliciousness is going to taste like. All right, so no more than six in this pan. We can manipulate them to look more round so I'm just going to use the bottom of my measuring cup just press them down like so so what I do I just oil the bottom of my measuring cup and that prevents it from sticking too much just press it down Devon says it's Devon Gale who's interested in the diabetic Christmas game. Oh, hi Devon Gale. Yes. If I have the time, I'll do a tutorial on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't make Christmas cakes to sell anymore. My sister, Kenny Kays, she is the Christmas cake baker. That's what she does. So if anybody is looking to purchase Christmas cake, uh, if you're watching on Instagram, you can DM her at Kenny K's Delight and ask about her Christmas cake. Andre Daran says, I'm the thing. I'm going to show my right bread food. <laughs> Next time, don't throw away right bread food. So this is what it looks like. We have six cookies so far. This one, for this size, it will give us 12 cookies. And this is enough for my family. So take a look. We're going to bake this for... 18 to 22 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Looky, looky here. The person's on Instagram. Careful. And of course, for our YouTube friends, this is what the almond breakfast cookies are looking like. Again, if these were to be so we have it at 325 and we have it at 20 minutes. So if we were making that into a bar, I just need a smaller pan, you spread it, you bake it as is, and then you, you cut it into squares. All right, so we're gonna put these all the way because my husband is kind of looking at me like, are you gonna be baking cookies all night? I'm gonna make dinner. So let us clean up. Now this ceramic. These? Or ceramic roof pans. Ceramic roof pans? They're in here. We need them for. That could use the cookie? That could use for the cookie? No, because it's more like a it's more like a loaf. Alright guys, so I'm gonna scrape the rest of my cookie dough out. Karen McPherson says so we need the and family anyway. Hi Karen, welcome. We are on go slow today, so you don't miss much. We are now making a breadfruit almond cookie, and we're making it gluten free. Just showing you guys how you can use up your override breadfruit. So be careful when you're cleaning the blade; it's very sharp. Put this in here. Our cookies are in the oven, Karen. And now we're gonna move on to our protein. And we're making chicken steak, guys. You know when you go to the Chinese restaurant, especially the ones in Jamaica, they have something that is called chicken steak. Um, for this dish, many culture call it many different names. The Japanese call it katsu. Uh, some other country call it sitsu, it's called all kind of things. But basically it's chicken breast and we're gonna bread it with breadcrumb and fry it. Can you keep it? And enjoy it. it. Says thank you for the advertisementship. You're welcome. Also, if you chill this cookie dough before you bake it, it's also delicious. And for those people who like 
the, to eat the no bake cookie dough. This guy, this is so good. As I said, this is raw food at its best. Um, as I said, if you don't like eggs, you can always leave the egg out. It does not affect the texture. I only added the egg because I'm looking to get more protein into this. All right, so we're getting protein from our nuts and we're getting protein from our egg and we're getting a little bit of protein from the melted butter. Top ranking says, tell her to call chief when, she, when she's finished. Firefly Dream says, over oh, nice. Hi, Latoya. Is that a message from Chip? Chip is sending out the SOS on my life. I tried calling you today. Put this in the um, in the fridge. Okay, so we're cleaning up and we are going to move on to our protein. Let me see if I can reuse some of these dish. So we are going to need some flour, some egg wash, and some bread crumb. All right. So for dish number two, we are going to be making our entree, and the entree tonight is inspired by Chinese takeout that we love to eat. So, in Jamaica, the Chinese have what is called chicken steak. I'm going to show you my version of it, how simple it is to make. As a matter of fact, eating chicken breast cooked Chinese style is my favorite way to enjoy chicken breast. Uh, so for that, we are using number one, panko breadcrumb, and the panko breadcrumb is a Japanese style breadcrumb. This breadcrumb is very interesting because the bread, they make the bread just to make the breadcrumb. And then the breadcrumb is not really crummy like we know it because they cut it with a blade so it's more flaky. Could you look down there if you see like a, a metal pan coming? God chosen says, how do you determine what ingredients can be combined to get the perfect taste? Because I am a genius chef, that's why. I can't explain how I determine. Uh, flavor starts in my head, and I, I just know what goes together and what don't. I really, 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 really can't explain it. I feel like I was just born to do culinary and culinary only in a very genius kind of way. I, I hope that explains it. So on my tree, I am going to be putting my panko bread crumb. And this is how my sister and I always do it. We always try to use one tray for the flour and the bread in to not dirty up a lot of things. So half of the pan, we're gonna put some bread crumb in, about one cup. Okay, Let's see where that takes us. And then on the other side, we're going to need a little bit of flour, maybe a cup of flour. When can you go get the cayenne pepper for me? Or any seasoning that you see around there? Firefly Dream says this is your gift from the Lord, Chip. This is where? This is your gift from the Lord. Oh yes, I think, I think so. I think I was... <laughs> I was just born to do culinary. Like I knew I wanted to, to be a chef from I know myself. And I'm very, 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 very good at it. So it makes me very happy too. All right, so we have our panko breadcrumb. We have some white flour. We have our chicken. And the pot of chicken that we're using is chicken breasts. These are D-bone skinless chicken breasts. I went ahead and I season them. And because I'm going into a little Chinese vibe, I actually season these with some ginger, some light soy sauce, and some Chinese cooking wine. Nothing else. And this is what they look like. Maybe, did I put cayenne pepper already? Maybe, I'm not sure. Not sure at all. So 
So guys, watch out for the cookies. Thank you, my dear. So my husband brought her on the Cajun seasoning. I love using this stuff. It's not salty, I always have it. So I'm just gonna season up the flour with just the Cajun seasoning, that's fine. So about two teaspoons of the Cajun seasoning going into the flour. And we are gonna mix it together like so. So we're getting the bread in prepped. All right. Put this off to the side. So pan for breadcrumb, season flour. Check, check, and check. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you could smell what's going on in my oven. That breadfruit almond cookie, oh my God, it smells so, so good. So this is one egg. We're just gonna add a little bit of water to it. We're gonna make an egg wash. And this is going to act as the glue that is going to help the breadcrumb to stick to the chicken and when you try to apply it. Andre says, oh God, you're making me hungry. Oh, Andre, thank you for sharing your Sunday with me. So this is my light soy sauce. I love flavor, I love to eat, so whatever I make, I try to make it taste delicious. I just added a teaspoon of light soy sauce. That's totally optional if you're trying to make this meal. This is the thing with culinary, it's not, cooking is not an exact science like baking, you know, you can do whatever you like, you can do whatever you want, you should always just use a recipe as a guide and as a guide only, alright, don't go anywhere, I'm going to get some plastic wrap, soon come back. Okay, so here we are. Let me just clean away this thing right here. So plastic wrap, check. We're gonna use this to cover chicken because we're going to give it a little mallet. Sheila, where's our mallet? The wooden one. Can we see it in forever? Can you check the bucket for the mallet, please? Thank you. Boss Tama says, I love this lady and her kitchen is beautiful. Well spoken just, and takes her time explaining everything. Yeah, I might like just what's the coffee. So, guys, I haven't gotten a cut forever in my kitchen. My knife just, just sliced my finger. Let me see if it's falling off. No, it's still there. As a new knife, it's showing your whole sharp Yeah. My caveman knife. <laughs> God. Do you know do you know where the gloves are? I'm gonna need a glove yes, for that. God chosen says Chef, you're making me want to go into the kitchen right now to experiment. I mean if you love it, you should just go there. Do what you love, guys. Once you do what you love, you only become so good at it until you master it. That's how it is. You know, that is how it is. If you love it, keep at it until you master it. These cookies, oh my word, they are so looking so good. And I'm going to dress them up with even more chocolate. So stick around. Just try it. Two. So when my cookies come out, I'm gonna put Nutella on it and put more nuts on it. So I stick my fingers, so I'm gonna put on a glove so I don't bleed out on my chicken. I don't think these gloves can fit my finger. Huh? I look for the table. Yeah, these are the sandwich gloves. Stick around, guys. Are you finding the mallet? No. Kanisha, where is my mallet? I can't seem to find any. <laughs> oh, so my husband find the smallest scoop that I was looking for. I know I cannot find my meat mallet. 
This is what happened when my kids come into the kitchen and say that they cook it for themselves. They never ever put my stuff back in place. I love to be able to walk in my kitchen in the darkest of night and put my hand on my stuff. I know where they should be. Like my mallet should be into this top drawer. But let me see if they put it into the bottom. Oh, see down there? Found it. So they had it in another drawer. All right, come, I'm not going to die. This knife caught me. <laughs> I was just wiping up and I just feel my finger went down on it. All right, let's move on. Did you find a bigger glove? Cheryl Jenkins, hi. Hey, Cheryl. big hands you know so these gloves do not work with my hand all right let's see let's see Kelly Kay's delight says can I help you tonight sis <laughs> I found it my sister Andre says Kelly show what a hammer Karen McPherson says chef where you get that bread from Dubai oh I bought this bread from at Fresh Approach but usually once you go into the I was surprised to see it at Fresh Approach and it was just wrapped out in bulk. But I usually just get it at General Foods or Lee's uh, supermarket. So before I show up, says, I'm glad to see the face of all the delicious food that's cheap in Saturdays. Whenever I come to Jamaica, I will have to visit. visit. And we would love to have you. So now that my hand is safe, we're going to move on to our chickadees. Looking at my cookies. A few more minutes to go. Okay. So, this is my boneless, skinless chicken breast. And so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to butterfly it. I'm going to cut it in two. So, just lay it flat. I usually just put my hand flat on it and just glide your knife through it like so. And now, you have two chicken breasts, one and two. All right. Hosley again says, "What will you be cooking for dinner this coming Sunday?" <laughs> Next week Sunday I'll be at street food. So normally when I'm at street food, I don't. Uh, when street food finish, we stop at Island Grill. <laughs> Or a Chinese restaurant, I kid you not. So once I have street food, I do not make dinner at home. I'm too tired. So we usually stop at one of our favorite fast food place and just have some food or one of our sixes on a Sunday. Definitely a fast food joint that will be open. If it's on a Saturday, definitely a street vendor. We pull up and get our food and enjoy it. And Campbell said her ship. Oh, thank you, Campbell. This, this is, what's that? I'm gonna leave. What's what? This one is, feel like it was cut already. What's what, Matt, mister? All right, so we cut the chicken to make it smaller. This one don't need to be cut, so let us. Budget brand, oh, sorry to hear, ship. Thank you, Patrick. Andre says, when you're done, can you autograph that glove and send it to me? <laughs> Andre, you're not serious, Andre. You are joking. Okay, so now that I find my mallet that I was accusing my, well, I'm not accusing, they misplaced it. I know they did. So what I do, cover the chicken, just like that. And so the mallet has a smoother side and a rough side. The rougher side is if you want to tenderize the meat, uh, but chicken breast is very tender. We're just trying to get it flatter, so we're using the smooth side. So you're just going to bat it gently. If we can, say no to me if you're the one that will be cooking dinner this Sunday because I already have my reservation. 
yes, I'll be cooking some stuff, Shauna, since I showed you a post to my co-worker. They love this. I think their host was watering while watching. <laughs> oh, thank you, Shauna. Sandra says check in the cookings. So this is what it looks like. Put it on my tray and we are going to mail it away. Don't so you want to start from the thick end. And the cookies look trash and ready. About two more minutes and the oven is going to go off. No, to me, you said your dishes always look scrumptious. Yes, I try my best. I mean, everybody will never like our food at Street Food Saturdays because, you know, for whatever reason, taste is subjective, but we try our best to make it taste good all the time. special I chef special oh maybe I'm not gonna promise you guys I kind of work with how I feel you know I don't want to give empty promises that I can't keep all of my dishes are special because I change the menu every single time every single time uh, one of the most difficult thing is to have consistency when you're cooking in Jamaica and I'm going to tell you why 90% of the ingredients that we cook with in Jamaica is imported and sometimes you can't get it or sometimes the price is so much for example when you look at shrimp I buy a hundred pound of shrimp for example uh, the least amount of shrimp I'll buy 75 pounds so you buy 70 pounds of shrimp and by the time you cook that shrimp you only have about 20 pounds so you lost so much in just ghost weight so if you don't know what you're doing when you're making food you know you end up operating at a loss so you guys should try it when you cook when you buy let's say you buy a pound of shrimp when you saute that shrimp wait and tell me how much you end up with he was lazy. What is your favorite meal? My customers would have to say that. Every single meal I make, I just try to make it as best as possible. I don't have a signature meal or dish. I just make food and the cookies are ready. And Joe says, I've never got the chicken. Why do you do it? Just to make it bigger, you know, just to make less look like more. All right, so off we go. Looky, looky here at her cookies. Look here, guys. These are big and beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna pause with the chicken, take off the chicken. Love. Don't know to me. Says, how long have you been in the food industry? Forever. Let me see. I'm way, way over 40. So, I've been in this industry for about 25, more than 25 years professionally. Yes. All right. So, at this stage, this is what we're going to do. Guys, it's happening. This is what we're going to do. While the cookies are warm, we want to grab the Nutella. I love Nutella. This is a hazelnut chocolate spread. So while it's warm, I like to just put some Nutella on. Just spread it on. She can I get a few slivered almonds? Thank you. Just put a little bit in there for me. Sunflower so Shamano says, What made you want to start street food Saturdays? And do it on the river. Also, how did you decide what the menu will be for you? I can tell you why I decided to start street food, but I can't tell you why I decide how I decide the menu. It come to me. 
Let's put stuff in here. So street food started and started out. So I used to lecture in the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management at UTEC. So I would teach on the all culinary modules in the food service degree program. And then in 2014, I wrote a paper about preserving our traditional way of cooking, which is on wood fire. But then I realized, based on my travels, even before that, I realized that everything, one culture, well, all culture have one thing in common, and that is cooking over live fire, which we call wood fire. So it started out that, that way, wrote the paper, present the paper, and, and then I thought, you know what? I said to my husband, you know what? I'm going to do something. You know, we weren't sure what the hell we were going to do, but we know it was going to be cooking. And my husband said, oh, you should just cook soup every Saturday. And I'm like, what? I'm going to get bored. I'm going to put these back just to melt the Nutella a little bit. Latoya Roof, those cookies look delicious and lovely. Thank you, Latoya. I'm Jason, and I'm going to go out there in. So for two minutes, we're going to melt that. So, so I wrote about preserving our traditional way of cooking. Um, but every time I travel, travel the world, travel Jamaica, I find myself being drawn to the markets, the street food vendors, and then I thought, you know what? The, the market tells a real story. The street food vendors are the vendors who keep the traditional cooking alive as much as they can. So in paying homage to them, I said, I'm going to call, I said to my husband, we're going to call this the Street Food Saturdays. And he said, what kind of name is that? And then he said, okay, fine. And so we decided that we're going to call it that. And then I went back to my community where I was from and I saw the river where I used to fish and swim in as a child. And then it was overrun with garbage. The river was totally overrun with garbage. I was so saddened and disappointed. I'm like, what is wrong with these people? Why would they put garbage in the river? Everybody, old fridge, old toilet, all kind of garbage was the river was filled, old cars, everything was in the river. Garbage, I was not used to that. I was so disappointed and I had such good memory, you know, fishing in that river, bathing in that river. And so from 2014 until today, my sisters, some community members, my husband, my kids, some strangers. We have been cleaning up that river to, to make it what it is. And so we decide if we want to fix a problem, we are going to have to offer the dining experience in the river, right? And, um, and also by doing so, we will create some jobs for persons in the community will be indirectly teaching people how to properly dispose of their garbage, not to let your wastewater run in the river, do not throw your, your household garbage in the river, do not throw your car parts in the river. It is a challenge, but it's a challenge that I feel like is part of my journey. I welcome the challenge, it's very difficult because we never ever leave the river dirty and if we go up there now it is going to have garbage but what we do if garbage is there we clean it out and we start over every single time we go on location we have to clean that river up plus we have somebody to maintain it but we still have to clean it and just start over so that is the story in a nutshell Yes, it's a long time. So Street Food Saturdays is from 2014. It's not just now. Kenny K device is from you were 12 and that is outside the kitchen. I'm here, my sister um, extended the story there. Um, so guys, so what I'm doing, I'm just adding a little more fat to the Nutella and my nuts. And I'm going to just put these back just to toast up the nuts. This is how I like to eat it. And 
line of the showing you. So these are going to go right back in the oven. Karen and Mary Johnson, good evening. You need to have street food such as more frequent things difficult to get in. Karen, I can't have street food Saturdays. We only used to have street food Saturdays once per month. We have a fine finger, says right, when I travel, I get into the town and socialize around the natives and their culture. So it's like. It is. Veralo says Adoro, that means Diamond says, Are you all having something sweet for Valentine's month? Oh, we try not to plan too far in advance. We operate alongside nature, so we just go with the flow. That's the type of vibe, that's the type of person my husband and I are. We don't, you know, we don't try to be too fussy and too complicated. We just go with the flow, so we're not even thinking about February just yet. Fire Fire Dream says you did an amazing job. Thank you. Yes, and highly favored Chelsea says, well, this is a lot of work. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, so Chelsea, what are you referring to? The dinner? Karen Ann Mary Johnson, she meant, she said street food Sundays more frequent. Oh, street food Sundays. Karen, once a month for now I can do the Sunday. Most of my team members, they are Sunday church goers, myself. So when we go, we can't do it all the time. And it's a lot of work. As you guys know, we operate in nature, meaning we, everything we do at Street Food Saturday, we set it up, we break it down, we pack it away. So it's a lot of physical labor. You know, we want to not change the river. We want to flow alongside nature. Um, so it's very difficult, but Chelsea, you love it. The river cleaning seems like a lot of work. It is Chelsea. It is a lot of work. Neighbor Five Fingers says vegan seems to be increasing in our population. Any entries for any entries for these people? Yes, we do quite a bit of vegan, but only by request. Because even though vegan eating is on the rise, you still have more people in every, well, in most population that eat meat. So you know, from a business point of view, you're going to go for what you know will sell. But yes, persons who dine with us, if they are vegan and they really want to dine with us. Uh, in the reservation process, they will just submit the reservation, pay, pay for something that is on the advertised menu, and then they'll say, oh, can I have the chef make me this, or can the chef create a vegan platter for me? And yes, when that request comes in to me, I quickly get it done, because I also believe that vegan food must be fabulous and tasty. All right, so here we go. Those cookies are going to come out right now. Cookies are out and stunting and tasty. <laughs> they look like these are so awesome. Here are the cookies. Curry and Marie Johnson, chum, I am SBA. Trisha says, oh, December 31st to be open, though. <laughs> Trisha, how are you there? December 31st was open this morning. And it is now temporarily closed. The seats are all taken. However, hope is not lost. Because all the people who run in and fill up the seats this morning, if they don't pay by tomorrow, they... Their, their reservation is going to be deleted so that we can free up some space. So the Instagram personnel will keep you posted on that. So guys, this is what it looks like. So let's go through this again. So we take a chicken breast. So this is my dry hand, wet hand. So we take our wet hand. We pass the chicken breast into our egg wash. All right, and by the way, too, I was chatting so much. The chicken breast was dredged in seasoned flour. So we're now passing it in egg wash. And then we are going to lay it flat onto our breadcrumb. Pat it into our breadcrumb so that it sticks. Then we are going to turn it over. Then we come through with 
the dry pan and we pat it down on the other side. And this is what our chicken steak looks like. Santo Shono says thank you for sharing the community service. I also remember childhood memories from bleeding in the river in Trinidad as a child when I lived there. You're so gifted and your food is hot. hot thank hot. you. Kylie says nice. Raquel says she does on a request she did for my party in May. Food was very delicious and I bagged a piece of apple tart <laughs> on a lie she did and she brought it to the river for me. Very delicious. And this is says, I booked in December 31st. My payment is on the way. All right, great. Favor Clive says, how far are you from Montego Bay? Coming to Montego Bay soon, and I plan to stress my husband out in order to get to, to street food. Well, we are in Kingston, St. Andrew, so it takes me four hours to drive to Montego Bay, and that is without traffic heading out of town. So. Give yourself, my husband is saying three. I say four hours. Give yourself four to five hours to come. But what do I know? He's the driver. I am the sleeper. Trace says, as Annie's best can you add two more people to your booking? Yes, it's easy to add to your table uh, if it is done in a timely manner because a table that seats two will also seat four or can also seat four. I think I messed up my dry, dry hand with hand. All right, so I need some more breadcrumb here. Let me get it. Can I get the breadcrumb? Open it. A little more breadcrumb. So I'm gonna turn my pot on, get my oil going for our, thank you, for our dinner. No, our dinner is gonna to come together quite soon. Let me turn my fire on over this side for our pasta. All right, so these are gonna be fried. God chosen says, are you planning to take street food Saturdays to other parishes? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Ho, 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 ho. Some things just belong in one place. Street food Saturdays can only work where it is. There's a lot of memory there for me. It's where I grew up. I was actually born in that community. I'm the only child for my parents that was born at home. So I kind of feel like this is my destiny. That river was my favorite place to hang out. If my mother needed to find me, she can always come and find me at the river. It's where I taught myself how to swim, how to fish. Uh, we used to have shrimp in the river before they poisoned the river and so it's so hard to replenish the life form in the river. And so, you know, my life is a part of that river and for it to come full circle, for me to be doing what I'm doing, I feel like, you know, it's just part of my purpose. And I always feel blessed because every single thing I do, I feel like it's part of my purpose and I'm living my purpose. And to live your purpose is a very good thing. Put some oil in here for me, please. The river is slowly coming back. I did some money to try to jump upstream. <laughs> oh yes, it's Saturday. slowly coming back. And we have mullets, and mullets like salmon, salmon jump, go upstream. AJ says, where are you from? I am from Mount James District, West Rural St. Andrew. I'm a country girl. Yeah, that's good. Alright guys, so we are on the last chicken steak. And we are going to get the breadcrumb on it. My hands are totally messed up now. Actually, I'm going to need one more set of this blood for my chase. So here we are. So dessert is done. We still have another batch to bake. Can you take those off the tray? Go in and put them on 
look in the box if you can find a plate. Put it right there. Put them on a plate or on a platter so that we can bake the others. All right, so guys, look at this. This was one, two, three. This was four chicken breasts, I think. And now it's, it's a lot of food. This could serve a family of 10 and we are a family of four. Sandra, Sandra. Nothing is in the box. When did you add the chicken in the flour again? I really want most of this one. The bones. So the bones are over here. What was Sandra's question? He said, when did you add the flour? Oh, the flour was used to dredge the chicken. You know what we say, flour the chicken? Mozilla says, hi, just want to know if the portion for December 31st Eating option will be for one person or two. One. Clean up time. So for the person who asked the question about the flour, the seasoned flour, we use it to flour the chicken. And then the chicken is dipped into the, in the egg wash and then in the bread crumb. Okay, so we're going to cook our noodles. And for noodles, I'm using thin spaghetti. And the flavors that we're going to be putting on this are soy sauce, chili bean paste, and of course some scallions and some um, pepper. That's all. Very, very simple. So I'm going to put this in some boiling water over this side. You're going to bake the rest of the cookies on the line? Huh? You're going to bake the remainder of the cookies on the line? Yeah, I'm going to get that done. So I can eat one? Yes. So my noodles are going in. Go and get two bowls for these noodles. Two white bowls out of the thing. You guys can see, can you turn the YouTube channel? So on this side of the world, we are cooking our thin spaghetti. And they're thin, so they're not going to take long to cook. You don't see some that is wider than their meat. All right, so we're not cooking. Yeah, we're not going to cook. Uh oh, I forget. I thought I was leaving. We're not going to be cooking our spaghetti with too much salt because the sauce that we're going to be adding to it is salty. Actually, I had a container here with some takeout sauce from the Chinese store. Just, just, just in what? The, in the garbage bag. What? What did you say? Go feed, please. All right, so let me put on another bloat while I wait for my oil to heat up. Delicious. 
So this cookie, guys, I'm going to put a tutorial on the YouTube channel, and I want you guys to bake it. And again, if you don't have a ripe breadfruit, a regular breadfruit will do. It's just that if it is an unripe breadfruit, you have to boil and mash the breadfruit first. The ultimate says the cookies look great. Miles well, says holy do. Sunflower oh, Sean you know. says it looks delicious. It is. Alright, so let me give my pasta a little stir around. The ultimate says mm. I need some. I would share it with you, you know, guys. I surely would. Okay, so I want to try and give my husband something to eat in very short order. That's going to happen shortly. So let us flatten our cookies. This time, and what I love about these cookies, you can jazz them up however you like. So for these, I'm going to stick some chocolate chip in these before I bake them, along with some sliced almond. Kelly says it looks good too. It does. So it's if good. you're gluten intolerant, I don't, I don't like to make complicated food, guys. I kind of, I love sharing, and I like to encourage you guys to make, you know, food, I mean, not just you enjoy them food. Food is something that you enjoy, so you want to make it so delicious. Kenny K is delighted. Victoria and I will be making this cookie for our Christmas. Go ahead, Vicky. Nicolette Summers, good memories. Hi, Nicolette. When gone, hey, never say never. When you grow, you grow. Yeah. Can I get the nuts? Yes. So you I'm go going to. Kenny K is sorry, lemonade. I'm going to be putting three little. Hershey's chocolate chip on each. This is why I came out of baking. When I first went to culinary school, guys, I had this idea that I was going to go away and come back to Jamaica and I was going to be a pastry chef and I wanted to do cake art, you know, make some fancy cake. But then I realized that I didn't have the patience for decorating. It was too, it was just, I just never had the talent to decorate cakes the way I would like to decorate it. And it got me a little bit stressed out. And one day my professor said to me, hey, you know what? The best bakers do not decorate and the best decorators do not bake. He said that you are so good with flavors. So tell you what. Focus on baking, so I changed my major to baking, so I jumped over from pastry to baking, so I studied the science of baking to understand, you know, what happened in the baking process and how the ingredients work. But as it, re as it relates to those intricate finishing details, I don't have the patience for it. See, I said I wanted to put three, and now some of them are going to have four. Flavor Five Fingers says, I'm tempted to add to one on top when I make these. You can add whatever, ever. This is the beauty of these cookies. You can add absolutely whatever you like. And Campbell says, it looks yummy. Hashtag more watering. Thank you. Life is great, says the best. So it this is. Shauna says, just finish me everything you're making to Maryland in the USA. Oh. Sandra says, yes, yeah, that cookie looks delicious. All right, so we're going to make these. Save 20 minutes at 325. Flavor Five Fingers says, sounds familiar. After my culinary school, I realized Flora and I don't get along and I don't like to bake. But I still bake very well enough, but it's a decorating part. I can't stand it. Uh, so I quickly switch. Um, I finish because you know my mother taught me that you must finish everything you start. I finish, I learned, I learned a lot of stuff about the things. Nobody can like I, I know formulas, I know you know most people that are baking, 
they can't bake without a recipe. And to go back to the first question that was asked, because of how I was trained, so I was trained from a formula point of view, so I can always create any recipe. I know the methods on the spot used in anything. But I jumped years past, and then I decided, you know what? I'm going back to culinary school, and I'm focusing on culinary because it allows me to get more intimate with my creative side. It, you know, it doesn't box me in. I don't have to stick to the formula. You know, I can change the recipe to however I like. I can cook what is in my fridge. So, all right. So enough said. Give my husband some dinner. Wait. So for chili, Wait. I have bean paste. Chinese food, Asian food is one of the favorite food of mine. I have bell pepper, hot pepper, scallion. These are the flavors. I just want to go into my noodles. Wayne says hello. Who's Anil? that? Wayne. Hey, Wayne. Anil says, can I get some in Canada? Oh. When I come back to Canada, Anil, I'll cook for you. We'll link up and I'll cook for you. All right, so. This is chili oil, this is another tutorial. This is something I make, or some people call it chili crisp. So I'm gonna put one spoon of that, two spoons of that. My family and I love every single thing spicy. Can I have the bowls ready? Cause these noodles are going to be ready fast. And then I'm using, this is bean paste. This is red bean paste. And I went into the Chinese supermarket because it says buy one, get one free. And of course I had to take that deal. So I have one spoon of chili paste and then I have my oil eating up here. What's going to happen is I am going to pour the hot oil over this and then use it to flavor my noodles. And you see what says so you can do a cook up. And I'm looking forward to it. Oh, not cook off, cook together. I don't do cooking competition because it takes a lot out of it. So I'm going to drain my noodles. You want to do this while it's hot? Noodles are ready. So off I go. Drain noodles. You see the water? Some, some of the water. I don't really need the water for this application. Everybody will mix up their own noodle when they get it. So we put about 
two teaspoons of the mushroom soy sauce straight from the bottle. And then we take the hot oil and we just, just put a little on there. Okay, so oil, so what's going on with this oil? Sure, the hotness should be a little bit more dramatic, but it is what it is. And then, where's the fork? Can you hear the light? It says that plus the water can be very helpful. And then we mix it up ourselves in the bowl like so. Look at that, guys. We mix it up into our bowl. Mix it up into our bowl. And then, oh, if I'm stressed, this is what I do. I eat noodles and we eat it. Mmm, so good. Oh boy, pinto says yummy. So good. What is this here? Chicken. So I have a little leftover sauce that I got from. I will save it from a Chinese restaurant. Here you go, my dear. Patricia Brown says Here you go, my dear. Thank you. You're going to leave this one. I'm going to change the stove to fry the chicken much faster because that stove is behaving. Patricia Brown says, love not just Jeff will be. will be a whole lot of us watching and not talking. <laughs> Time to fry our chicken. Save up my fingers as your sister are also incredible. And what? S-O-U-S. Oh, nice. so, so chef. oh, I forget the light soy sauce, which have the salty note. We need a little salty note in here because we didn't put the noodle with any salt. Here you go, my dear. Add it. You can have that one. No, don't have that one. I don't want it anymore. I want you to cook it. Okay, so oil is getting nice and hot. We're gonna fry our chicken. But before we do that, we need to set up what we're going to drain our chicken on. It's ready to set up right here. Let's move away from the Nutella. Simple, so that I'm seeing food and can't eat it, say. Mm. Thank you for watching, Dimple. Britilla, Britilla, Britilla says, do you do this every Sunday? Every Sunday, except when I'm having street food. Every Sunday, this is not a prop, this is not a fake show, this is just how I roll with my family. Correct, I'm Marie Johnson. Most gorgeous. Thank you. How many cookies did I make, guys? Six at first. And I tell you, actually, you eat off all the cookies already. Dimple says you're welcome. All right, so our oil is hot. We need a little bit more. A little bit too hot, so I'm adding some more to cool it down. Anya Simon says, have you ever heard about West Jam? What's that? No, Anil. Okay, so first piece of chicken steak goes in. And second piece goes in, and we are going to be frying. Check in my file. What did I tell you guys? Dinner is almost ready. Can I have another plate to just make another noodle? Another bowl. Maybe a black one. Is there any? Yes. No, that one. Very quickly, they're about 
half of an inch thick. So they're gonna cook very quickly. They're chicken breasts, so you don't wanna cook them too long. Oh, this is not too much. 
The day after, you can go Italian on this, so you could get your favorite can of um, spaghetti sauce, re-season it to your taste, and you could put a layer of mozzarella cheese onto your chicken steak, and then you put some sauce on it and just put it into the oven and let it melt down and just boil some spaghetti and have some spaghetti or whatever pasta you like to eat. So again, the only thing that is limiting you when you're cooking is your imagination. So we're done. We are done. Done, done, done. Chicken steak is done. Take the oil off. You guys will see these tutorials, especially using up my 10 overripe breadfruits. <laughs> uh, I'll try to put them on the YouTube channel for you guys to cook along if you want to cook something different. Let me just clean up all of my oil splatter. I don't fry a lot in my kitchen because it goes all over the place. Let me clean up and present our lovely, lovely dinner. Dinner is served. Pleased to present to you guys our dinner. Let's go. So for our dinner, we have our chili noodles with chicken steak. And we have our gluten-free, gluten-free, this one. We have our gluten, gluten-free cookies that we're gonna be taking out of the oven. Right about now. For those persons who are gluten intolerant, yes. So almond flour, 
it's a little bit on the pricey side, but if you cannot afford almond flour or you don't have access to it, oatmeal flour is fine. What is oatmeal flour? You take your regular old-fashioned oats or regular quick oats, you put it into your food processor and you chop it to a powder and that is that becomes what we call oats flour and you use it in to replace the natural flour to make this cookie if you're gluten free. I really prefer to make this cookie using those other types of flour versus the, the, um, the regular flour because it just gives it a different vibe. Everything in it tastes so natural and unprocessed or, or you know or not so processed and delicious. So we're going to drop off. We are going to enjoy. Well, I'm going to eat my dinner because my husband is done eating. And she going to start eating the cookies because she's a dessert girl. We are going to take some pictures for our Next in Food page. Before I get off, guys, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Next in Food. If you're watching on Instagram, the link is in the bio. You can click the link. This is what it looks like. Next in Food. Click the link. Subscribe if you have not yet done so. And also, guys, share the video. Uh, I'm going to try and do a diabetic-friendly fruitcake uh, when next you see me so that you guys can, if you're diabetic, you can have a lovely fruitcake for Christmas that is hassle-free. We currently have a Jamaican fruitcake on the YouTube channel that we simplified, made it very, very easy. That went up here before last. It, it has been there, so you can look there. We have sorrel cake on there also. If you're into that, we have a lot of stuff. If you love breadfruit like I do, we have quite a bit of breadfruit recipes there. Check out the YouTube channel. Tonight, we are recording our live on our YouTube, so you can also go back and check it out. Thank you so much for sharing your Sunday with me. It was my pleasure sharing mine with you, of course, sharing my family, sharing my kitchen. Thank you, guys. Have yourself a productive week, and I will see you guys when I see ya. Take care. All right, so we're still on YouTube. Yes, we're still on. Let's get the YouTube persons. These are for the YouTube guys. This is what our chicken steak dinner looked like with our noodles. That is what the breadfruit almond cookies are looking like. Thank you guys so much. So, so much. I'll see ya when I see ya.